Jesus! I am going to complete everything there is to do in Minecraft one update at a time, starting with the very first rendition of Alpha all the way up to present day. We will be building all there is to build, exploring new world changes every update, defeating mobs, and reliving Minecraft as if it's being played for the very first time. So sit back, enjoy all the twists, turns, ups and downs, subscribe for a potentially endless Minecraft experience, and Let's play Minecraft as it was intended to be. Welcome to my Minecraft Evolution series, and the adventure begins now. Welcome to Beta 1.5. Sorry I haven't posted an episode in a while. Real life got in the way, plus I had some other things on the docket that I thought wouldn't take as long as they did. But I am happy to bring you another edition of your favorite YouTube series. First up, we need to name the dog that we got in the last video. I asked for name suggestions and chose the top voted one. The top voted one was Beta, which I think is simple yet so good. It's to remember when we got him forever as a symbol of the golden ages of Minecraft. I do want to say though, someone else commented to name it Fence Post, which is just the funniest thing I've ever seen. I almost did that one instead, but stuck to my word of top voted. If I get a second dog ever, it will be named Fence Post. If you know, you know. So with that out of the way, in case you remember from past episodes, birch trees and spruce trees did not have their own saplings. They used to just drop oak saplings. Well, in beta 1.5, this all changed with the addition of spruce and birch saplings. Now, obviously my base area and a pretty large chunk of the surrounding area will only contain oak trees naturally. So we need to venture out and get the saplings from faraway lands and bring them back to this area so we can have every type of tree close by. That being said, I ventured out to our beta 1.2 portal area using the nether hub which is nicely in a forest biome that has a lot of birch trees. Chopped them up and got our first birch saplings of the series. This seems like such a small thing, but this is the beginning of Minecraft's great wood expansion. Yes, I know how bad that sounds. Yes, I chuckled while writing it. Yes, I'm explaining that it sounds dirty, which sort of ruins the whole thing. Gone forever are the days of oak trees as far as the eye can see. This is the beginning of a wood revolution. Okay, I really need to stop. After retrieving the birch, I headed out to our favorite taiga biome, where we found the spruce logs and beta the dog originally. As it got dark, I realized, man, this is always a pretty long walk, and I thought about adding to the nether hub just to get to it faster. But no journey is without its struggles, and strangely, I was beginning to like the 800 block walk to the taiga. I think if I made it any faster, I would miss the walk to get there. And also, these early beta updates are minor. We aren't spending very much time in them as they all kind of blend together with some tweaks and minor additions here and there. But this series is going to ramp up quickly as we get into modern Minecraft and huge releases. So the little things like the walk to the taiga are something we can enjoy and live in the present moment. And you know, because I don't want to accidentally generate too much of the world and make our life super hard later. Anyway, after reflecting on life itself, I got to the famous taiga and well, Jesus! Like I said, I got to the famous taiga, chopped down the spruce, got the saplings, and headed back home. When I got home, I planted them a little offset to our base in an empty area on the hill. Pretty cool to have all the trees available now. I then discovered that Notch finally released the first tiny quality of life tweak pretty much ever. Shift click from chest to inventory. After not having it for so long in the series, this feels so nice. And finally, time for the other major addition in this update, powered rails and their little baby brother detector rails. Powered rails changed minecart travel forever. Until these were added, minecarts were just a little wonky and didn't have too much utility. Now this became the fastest travel in the game at the time. And so I was going to do what any minecart enthusiast back in the day did an homage to all that have come and minecarted before me. I was going to build a roller coaster. As I'm gathering materials, here's a fun fact. This video is a long time coming for me and actually kind of means a lot. Let me explain. In this update back in 2011, I made a video showcasing a minecart roller coaster I had built in my survival world. 
It was about two frames per second contained copyright music of Avenged Sevenfold, the classic Jolly Craft texture pack, at least I'm pretty sure. And as you can see, the Windows 7 window shining through the screen capture. Just the biggest 2011 mood board of all time. And now, now here I am again, 12 years later, building yet another minecart roller coaster. Now, if you told 15 year old me that I would have been showing off Ryan's roller coaster number two to dozens of thousands of viewers, he would have laughed it off and not believed you. That being said, thanks to everyone who's been watching this and all my other videos. It truly means the world to me. Diamonds. Gold. Yes. And then something amazing happened. Look. Yes, there it was, a zombie spawner. Something I never thought possible in the old Alpha Chunks, considering they were so unbelievably rare back then. But we had found one. This means I have finally found Mossy Cobblestone, the last missing piece in the old sections of the Hall of Blocks, and probably the rarest block in the game at this point in time. The loot in the chests kind of sucked besides finding a saddle, which was only used for pigs until the horse update. I removed all the mossy stone and left it for later as I now had an unlimited source of zombies that I could eventually turn into a farm. But not now. Now it was roller coaster time once again. Once I gathered a bunch of cobblestone and wood and enough iron and gold to make probably a few dozen rails, it was time to begin construction. I didn't really have a plan nor probably enough rails at this point, but I knew I wanted a few roller coaster features and a few points of going slow enough to see my entire little base area. I dug up at the zombie spawner to remember where it was and when I came up it was raining, which if you didn't know, the weather was added in this version thunderstorms, rain, and snow. This was the first time it has ever rained in this world. Just wanted to take it all in for a second. It was strangely pretty beautiful. And so I marked the spot of the spawner and headed back home, which was not so far away. And when I went to sleep, I found that the monsters spawning in the bed thing was still an issue. So I adjusted my bed in the morning. I wanted my furnace to face outward, but when I broke it, it didn't drop my gold. I literally lost all my gold from this mining trip, which is so unbelievably hard to find in old Minecraft. And so I only had 12 powered rails to work with. It was not going to be good. Things kept going wrong when Beta the dog decided to ignore my directions to sit forever in his house and tried to attack this creeper outside out of nowhere. I don't really know how this even happened. Anyway, after all that drama, I was finally able to add the mossy cobble to the Hall of Blocks. Oh, that's just beautiful. With that, I began building the roller co- Oh, wait, what's this? Oh man, guess you better listen to it. I didn't really have a plan. I knew I wanted a couple features, spots slow and high enough to have cool views and a big spiral for fun. Oh man, this is gonna be an eyesore and I am here for it. Once I built the first hill and started laying some track, I knew I didn't even have close to enough rails if I wanted this to be bigger than something made for kids. And boy, I did. But I wanted to at least finish the frame first. It kind of took longer than I thought it was going to, but eventually I did. And it looks pretty awesome so far. To avoid it having floating wooden planks, I added some cobblestone support beams throughout and felt so cool using a water bucket to fall all the way down safely every time. I gotta say, these support beams are... Mm, bold. I kind of hate love them, and you, dear viewer, are forced to whether you like it or not. Okay, fine. It is an absolute monstrosity, I know. But it also screams old Minecraft like no other. After running some tests and placing the powered rails where they needed to go during the start, my thoughts were confirmed. I was short quite a few rails, and it was time to head back into the mines. And oh, we were in for a treat with this mining session. That's why I'm happy to announce this mining session is sponsored by Raid Shadow- No, I'm just kidding. But I found a skeleton spawner. That's two spawners in one video, and in one update. Now I have unlimited zombies and skeletons forever. The loot sucked though. I really am fiending for some gold. 
The spawner was connected to a huge alpha cave system too. One of the biggest and most extensive I have ever seen. This cave system could provide for like five Minecraft Steve families. And it had gold and iron and so many diamonds, like so many. This easily proved that diamonds were more common than gold in the early versions of the game. I cannot stress this enough, this cave system was easily thousands of blocks long and wide. I got so lost and found so, so much stuff. So much stuff. So much stuff. But just as I was swimming through all my newfound riches as Minecraft Steve discovered capitalism, tragedy struck. <gasps> no! 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 No, no, no. No, dude. Oh my fuck. I was near lava too, dude. I hope my stuff didn't fall in. At least the gold and the diamonds. I don't care about anything else, really. Yeah, remember how I said the cave system was huge? Now I had to find my dead body after I walked around in there for literally an hour. Which I'm not exaggerating. I have timestamps if you don't believe me. Luckily, for the most part, I was moving in one direction, and my line of torches actually led me to my stuff. I am so lucky, too. I could have been next to lava, or right above lava, but my stuff was perfectly nestled on a few floating blocks left behind from the creeper explosion, including all my gold, diamonds, and iron I worked so long to get. You're starting to understand why it took so long to make this episode. After a little more precarious mining because I just really, really couldn't help myself with this cave system, I finally approached the surface once again. And once I came up, it was right by the roller coaster. This was probably going to be the first thing I see when I approach my base for a while, but it was already a comforting and familiar sight after all the stress I was under for so long. I have never been happier to see something so ugly. Of all the times I've walked through this door in this series so far, this is by far the most relieving time. And after smelting my items, I knew I finally had enough. Made myself some more powered rails and detector rails because I wanted to utilize them since they are new. My plan is to just lay all the normal rails first, then run a bunch of tests to figure out where the pain points are and where the minecart starts to go backwards. So I did just that, and finally, it was complete. It finally worked after laboring for so long to get here. So let's do a full ride so you can see. So you come up the first hill and it slows down, allowing you to see the hall of blocks and the rest of the land super nicely. Then the first drop is the biggest and it goes all the way underground, comes back up and then slows way down around the chicken house. Drops down to the cliff below and sends you back up diagonally. This is another good viewpoint before dropping straight through one of the support archways, which actually looks really cool. Then back up to the highest point of the coaster and then getting dizzy down the spiral before being sent back to the beginning. Now, I already love this thing and it will be so cool to see the views change as we build more stuff in the series. It could definitely be prettier, though maybe someday we can build a cool station or tunnels or other decorations as we get more blocks and more options. But for now, we spent way too long in this update, and I think we've successfully showcased what Beta 1.5 has to offer. But of course, last thing to check, the fence post stacking tradition. Nope. Still nope. Always nope. Welcome to Beta 1.6. Beta 1.6 is a very, very minor update as far as beta goes, but of course we're still going to showcase everything that got changed. First thing I noticed is that the version number no longer stares at you in the top left. My screen has never felt bigger. Firstly, trapdoors. Only oak trapdoors, of course, but this was a cool new little decoration block. I decided to make some to throw around the house a bit to spice things up. Not really sure what these are, but it gives the house a tiny bit more depth. Now, I got a few comments about the Hall of Blocks. Firstly, someone had mentioned that it'd be cool to leave signs saying what sections were for what update. I spent a lot of time here thinking about it, and after testing it out, I kind of think I don't like the signs on the ground, and I couldn't think of a better way to label it. 
Maybe once we get hanging signs way down the line, we can make it super pretty. Though another comment I got was saying how it doesn't make sense to have the Hall of Blocks just be one long straight building. Gave me a really good idea. Instead of doing themed sections for major updates, it'd be really cool to have them be their own separate hallway or room. I could label the hallways, so this solves the sign issue and the super long boring building issue. So there will be like different little nooks and hallways coming off the main one in the future. This is kind of hard to explain out loud until you see it, but I'll show you all when the time comes. The major part of this update was the change to how wheat seeds are found. No more hoeing the ground until they pop out. This update added the tall grass we know and, well, if you're like me, hate because it gets everywhere constantly today. Also, dead bushes and ferns were added at the same time. Now, instead of venturing out to find some, I was able to use bone meal to grow it at my base. Like I said, it gets everywhere, so I'm going to keep my base lands nice and mowed for as long as I possibly can. So after breaking all of it and getting seeds in the new way, it was time for a map. This world's first map. Back then, locator versus non-locator maps wasn't a thing, and neither was right-clicking and instantly creating a full map of the area you were in. Instead, it functioned as a sort of mini-map, and was so low resolution you couldn't really tell what anything was. Like, this tiny little brown dot is my house. I walked around a bit just to see, and it was honestly really cool to see how the first map ever released in the game worked. Also, I love that the one tiny little red dot is actually my nether portal. That's so cool. I think I'm going to map out my lands every few updates just to see how things progress. I'm honestly not sure what's going to happen to this original map as we play through, but it'll be an interesting little experiment. One more thing that was added was the fact that hitting soul sand with a boat kills you but leaves the boat intact. Not sure why, but I tested it and it didn't work, but I realized it means dropping on top of the soul sand, not smacking into the side of it. Oh well. Beta 1.6 came with some crazy good quality of life changes as well. Firstly, glowstone was changed to 2x2 two two instead of 3x3, three three, and also glowstone in the nether finally drops 2-4 two to four instead of just one dust. Wool was updated to be 2x2 two two string as well. And this is the beautiful, beautiful time we finally got shift clicking in the inventory, crafting screen, furnace, not just chest to inventory shift clicking. It's gonna be so nice to auto craft and pull stuff from the furnace the modern way again. So nice. And lastly, in video settings, a performance setting was added, finally adding some more optimization to get Minecraft accessible to more people. Now, I know I said I was going to build stuff in the minor updates, but that roller coaster project took so much out of me that it was actually kind of nice to have a smaller update after it. And that was really all that was added in beta 1.6 and changed as far as single player is concerned. So if you're enjoying evolution and are excited for more, leave a like and subscribe if you're brand new. I love this series so much and I can't wait for the next episode as not only is it Minecraft's best version, my favorite version, but I have something super special in mind for you all to see. So definitely be there. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.